morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones of Oz, and here is your detailed forecast step down on Tropical Cyclone Alfred for the 3rd of March 2025. A lot to get through in this morning's forecast update. We're going to be looking at the forecast for Tropical Cyclone Alfred, where and when it's going to be making landfall, the expected impacts across the southeast of Queensland, spoiler alert, there are some significant impacts expected, and also for New South Wales, how much of the really heavy rainfall that the system is going to be bringing ashore is also expected. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing, but let's get stuck straight into things a look at tropical cyclone alfred, alfred right now as a category one strength tropical cyclone looking worse for wear but it has improved its appearance quite a lot overnight you can see located well offshore from the southeastern corner of queensland at this time and drawing away from the uh, mainland as well you can see it's heading in that southeasterly direction right now towards this wind observation buoy over here uh, we're expecting this tropical cyclone to con continue heading away from the southeastern corner of queensland throughout the remainder of today and into tomorrow before it makes that u-turn back towards queensland sometime tomorrow evening so you've still got about three or four days left to properly uh, properly prepare for this tropical cyclone. We are still expecting that Category 2 strength landfall across the southeast of Queensland and all of the forecast models have now narrowed down pretty much exactly where they want this landfall, which is between Maroochydore and the Gold Coast. Just some really good congruency right now. And one thing's for sure is that both Brisbane and the Gold Coast can expect to be thrashed by this tropical cyclone, which I'll get to in a later part of this video. But yeah, tropical cyclone Alfred looking more impressive than what it was yesterday. Uh, and you can see those wind observations as well, also looking quite healthy for some of the locations around this tropical cyclone there's ships and buoys all over this system here and we're recording wind speed still in that gale force threshold but one thing you might be able to notice here is Cato Island even though it's still relatively close to the tropical cyclone those gale force winds have completely eased off there this is an important part of the storm uh, to understand is that all of the really gnarly conditions are pretty much immediately south of the storm center the worst conditions from this tropical cyclone are to the south of the tropical cyclone and that is a very important factor to understand as we move forward with the actual forecast for this system Speaking of the forecast, let's just jump straight into it right now. No more wasting the time. You can see the Eastern Bear forecast model starting us off as usual here. Offshore from the southeastern corner of Queensland, initialized as a Category 1 strength tropical cyclone with a pressure of 983 millibars. That's pretty much bang on with what this tropical cyclone uh, actually has. You can see steadily heading away from the southeastern corner of Queensland throughout the remainder of today and into tomorrow morning before slowly moving uh, a little bit more through Tuesday and then beginning that recurve back towards Queensland late Tuesday night and through Wednesday and into towards Thursday as well. We're expecting the tropical cyclone to continue that southeastern motion for the next 36 hours or so before it really slows down and we're expecting it to head pretty much due west and then a slight turn towards the northwest. Now that northwesterly turn which you can see here in the forecast models, uh, that really slight northwesterly turn is what's going to be bringing the storm a little bit further north and up towards uh, the Sunshine Coast as opposed to the uh, yesterday's forecast taking us in towards New, uh, New South Wales or even into the immediate southeastern corner of Queensland. Uh, regardless of that, we're still expecting that tropical cyclone to approach the Queensland coastline is a very slow moving and quite a broad system all things considered with that landfall expected some, sometime between Thursday lunchtime and Friday lunchtime. The Eastern Bluff forecast taking this over uh, I believe it's Bribe Island through Friday afternoon and into Friday evening and then in towards the northern suburbs of Brisbane and as I said at the start of the video because this will be making landfall just immediately north of Brisbane those hostile the worst conditions will be coming ashore around the Brisbane and the Gold Coast area which is not good news indeed. I'm going to get to the impacts and what you need to be doing to preparing for this tropical cyclone in just a few minutes. I just want to hammer home the forecast this time and show you how much certainty there is between the other forecast models. So let's just jump into the GFS forecast model. It has been the unreliable forecast model for tropical cyclone Alfred so far, but it's pulled its finger out overnight by the looks of things and calling for the tropical cyclone to swing back around in line with what all the other forecasts are suggesting through Tuesday and Wednesday. Before that landfall on the northern side of the Sunshine Coast through late Thursday afternoon and into Thursday evening, right on top of Maroochydore. And the GFS is still the most northernmost biased tropical cyclone model uh, at this time, calling for the landfall as far north as what all the other forecast models are calling for, right on top of Maroochydore, uh, which is kind of unlikely at this point. I'm not expecting this tropical cyclone to move any further north of Maroochydore, just considering uh, how congruent the other forecast models are right now with that Brisbane landfall, but it's just a matter of a couple of kilometres right now, and again, that will bring the worst conditions ashore through Thursday evening. Icon forecast model as well, calling for that landfall pretty much at the exact same time, and just towards the south of where the GFS forecast model is calling for on Thursday and then if we cross reference that with the axis forecast model you can see that landfall occurring through late Thursday and into Friday morning actually the axis forecast model calling for that landfall just north of Brisbane halfway between Brisbane and Noosa by the looks of things through Friday afternoon uh, before this tropical cyclone moves inland and weakens but you can see if you've paid close attention that those conditions along the southeastern corner of Queensland it's not looking all that bad throughout the uh, or especially in terms of wind uh, readings for the next couple of days you can see today tomorrow and into towards 
Wednesday, and le- unless you live right on the coastline, the conditions are actually going to be pretty calm and those winds aren't going to be too strong. So you're going to have plenty of time and some pretty good conditions to prepare for this tropical cyclone. They only start to become a little bit more hostile across the northeast of New South Wales through Wednesday late morning and then to Wednesday afternoon for the southeastern corner of Queensland. Those winds are really beginning to pick up through Wednesday evening and then that landfall process looks like it's going to begin from Wednesday night and into early Thursday morning and that's when cyclonic conditions are going to begin developing. So you've still got about 24 hours after this video goes out, not 24, 48 hours rather after this video goes out of really calm, cool and collected conditions across the southeastern corner of Queensland and the northeastern corner of New South Wales. But after about Wednesday morning, the conditions are then going to begin to slowly deteriorate before rapidly deteriorating and falling off Wednesday night and into Thursday morning, which means you're going to want to have your preparations done by Wednesday night. And unfortunately, it is looking like Brisbane and the Gold Coast need to be preparing for the absolute worst case scenario at this time uh, in terms of rainfall and also in terms of wind speeds, because if we take a look at the rainfall forecast as well, some really significant accumulations are expected, which leads me nicely on into the expected impacts from this tropical cyclone. So let's use the forecast models throughout the landfalling process, which is over a four day period between Wednesday and Saturday when this tropical cyclone is meant to be heading into the coastline, making that landfall and then petering out as it gets in towards the interior parts of Queensland and New South Wales. You can see very significant rainfall accumulations can be expected from tropical cyclone Alfred falls up to about 500 millimetres expected into the Gold Coast hinterland, especially in towards Springbrook National Park. They're expecting some really significant falls there. And then out towards Woodenbong and Bonobo Desert falls up to about 350 to 500 millimetres expected there. Now, along the coastline and in more flatter locations, rainfall accumulations immediately south of the storm's landfalling location, which will be around Redcliffe up towards Maroochydore at this time. We'll be looking at rainfall accumulations there between Maroochydore down to, I guess, right down in towards south, uh, the southern parts of northeastern New South Wales. So as far south as about Coffs Harbour, rainfall accumulations along the coast should be between 150 and 350 millimetres. Still a wide scope of uncertainty, but we are still a little bit unsure on how wet this tropical cyclone is going to be and how strong it is uh, uh, meant to be along landfall. We're still very confident with that Category 2 strength system, and I'll get to that in just a few moments, but rainfall accumulations should be around that 200 to 250 millimetre mark, with falls as low as 150 millimetres and as high as 350 millimetres. Into the mountainous areas, it's obviously going to be substantially wetter. Falls between 300 and 700 millimetres can be expected, and into the Gold Coast hinterland falls definitely be pushing closer to that 700 millimetre mark, that's for sure. Alfred will be that slow moving system, it's going to dump a lot of rainfall over an extended period of time, and as such some really significant flooding is expected into uh, the Brisbane River and plenty of other rivers flowing through Brisbane and into Brisbane, the Narang River flowing through the Gold Coast as well, significant to major flooding can be expected of the Narang River, especially upstream, and I believe the Narang Dam, uh, Springbrook Dam, I believe that's what it's called, is holding quite a lot of water at this time, a concerning amount of water, so all of those rivers are certainly going to bring through quite a lot of uh, rainfall, that's for sure. The Tweed River is going to flood, that's pretty much guaranteed at this time, and down towards Clarence River as well, draining through uh, Grafton and then in towards Gamba, some significant flooding can also be expected there because significant rainfall accumulations in the mountains outside of Coffs Harbour, right up towards the mountains outside of the Gold Coast can be expected there with falls, like I said, between 300 and 700 millimetres. In terms of wind impacts, peak wind gusts shouldn't be too strong as you get further inland, but along the coastline they're going to be really gnarly, that's for sure. Major forecast models suggesting peak wind gusts up to 150 mil- uh, millimetres, kilometres an hour along the coastline. We are not used to seeing these winds across the southeast of Queensland, and you, the only comparison that I can really draw from this is some of the strongest severe thunderstorms that throw down funnel clouds and tornadoes. That's going to be the comparative wind speeds here, but instead of lasting for a couple of minutes, this is going to last for multiple hours on end. So Tropical Cyclone Alfred will deliver cyclonic conditions never before seen across the southeast of Queensland, especially. Peak wind gusts in the Gold Coast should be up to about 125 kilometres an hour sustained through Thursday night into Friday morning. Uh, peak wind gusts into the Brisbane metro area should be around that 100 to 110 kilometre an hour mark sustained for the uh, very similar amount of time. And then as you get further inland, wind speeds should be anywhere between 70 and 100 kilometres an hour, still very strong. And that's what's going to be sustained with those wind gusts up to about 130 kilometres an hour over pretty much the entire swathe of the immediate southeastern corner of Queensland. So the entire metropo- uh, metropolitan and suburban area of Brisbane and the entire suburban area of the Gold Coast as well. Peak wind speeds on exposed coastal locations between the Gold Coast down to Yamba, so including Tweed Heads and some of the mountains along the coastline there uh, around Byron Bay. Peak wind gusts could be up to 150 kilometres an hour there out of the south. Really significant wind gusts, especially as we get in towards late Thursday afternoon in the evening where this tropical cyclone's backside will be swinging down into the coastline here. You can see those massive wind gusts will be expected uh, as this tropical cyclone makes its final approach. So huge wind gusts can be expected, that's for sure, and significant property damage is going to happen as a result of that. So again, make sure you've got that outdoor furniture strapped and battened 
down. This will be a very, very significant impact, that's for sure. And just one more impact that I would like to talk about is the wave heights as well, and that couples out with the flooding. Uh, significant wave heights are expected from this tropical cyclone. You can see waves uh, as this tropical cyclone approaches the coastline will be up to about eight meters in height though. So pushing 24 to 25 feet here for the Gold Coast as well. And these waves get themselves right up onto the coastline here. Now, wave heights like this are a concern. We're already looking at some really significant beach erosion here. And considering that the Gold Coast and the city area is less than five meters above sea level here, we're likely to see ocean water start to flood back in towards the city area and also flood up and clog up all of those canals that make up the Gold Coast. So some really significant property damage and flooding can be expected as a result of that. But come Friday morning, when these waves are still going to be quite high as this tropical cyclone makes its landfall and moves further inland, with the rivers that are going to be dumping in huge amounts of water into the ocean, so the Tweed River, the Narang River, uh, and then all of the other rivers as you get further north up towards the Brisbane area, all of these rivers are going to be trying to dump their flows into the ocean by this point by Friday morning. But the waves are going to be pushing all of that water back up the river, so even more significant flooding and a bit of a feedback loop force major flooding can be expected as a result, which is quite a scary prospect. We've seen that before uh, up in North Queensland when we get tropical cyclone landfalls after some really significant rainfall. The flooding risk there is often exacerbated, but when we've got this and these rivers expected to be backed up by the amount of uh, waves that are going to be heading into the rivers uh, at, at their release point into the ocean, which will really be backing them up and kind of acting like a second dam, that's for sure, we'll be seeing some really significant flooding as a result through much of these river catchments, which is a very, very concerning aspect of the forecast, that's for sure. How to prepare for this tropical cyclone. This is an important part of the video and I'm going to be going through what you need to be doing across parts of Queensland to prepare adequately for this tropical cyclone as it makes its final approach to the Queensland coastline. So you've got the next 48 hours at least to prepare for this tropical cyclone. Ideally, you want all of your preparations done by late Wednesday morning. Conditions will rapidly deteriorate from that point onwards with wind speeds then approaching cyclonic conditions uh, through Wednesday night into Thursday morning along the southeastern corner of Queensland and into the northeastern corner of New South Wales. Now, for those between Maroochydore Door down towards Lismore, you need to prepare for a Category 2 strength tropical cyclone impact. That includes Brisbane and that includes the Gold Coast, especially in exposed coastal locations. Expect wind gusts as high as 130 kilometers an hour, maybe even pushing up to 150 kilometers an hour with sustained winds up in the 100 kilometer an hour mark for extended periods of time for both Brisbane and the Gold Coast now expected. Wind speeds should max out at about 100 kilometers an hour around Brisbane. I don't really see them getting much stronger than that. So in terms of all out preparations for a tropical cyclone, rather unnecessary for the Brisbane area and uh, her suburbs as well. I wouldn't recommend boarding up doors, that's for sure. I think that'd be a little bit overkill at this time, but again, that could change and I'll be the first to let you know if that does change. But in terms of getting stuff ready for this tropical cyclone right now, you want to be making sure all the outdoor furniture is in a secure location in the backyard, strapped down and battened together. Uh, the trampoline as well, strapped to that outdoor furniture or strapped to a part of the house where it can't fly around and cause damage. If you've got loose branches or a basketball ring hanging over the house or hanging near the house, then I'd recommend taking those down or moving it to another location. Uh, getting the trees professionally lopped is a good idea, but if you haven't booked them uh, now, then you're really going to struggle to find a professional tree lopper to come and do it, which means you are running your own risk doing it. And I highly advise against doing tree lopping uh, if you aren't licensed or you don't know what you're doing. But again, it is a good way to protect the home as well, especially if you've got loose branches that are hanging over your house. Ghost gums are the most notorious trees across the southeastern corner of Queensland for dropping significant loads on some of these houses here. So again, for those between Maroochydore down towards Lismore, being prepared for these really strong winds is a necessity at this time. And especially for those in exposed coastal locations as well, it's a very good idea to be as prepared as possible for these significant wind speeds. Most houses across the southeastern corner of Queensland and into New South Wales will hold up to wind speeds of 125 kilometers an hour. Anything stronger than that, we will likely see some roof failure, especially of some tin roofs as well. So that could be a concern indeed. And if you do live in a really exposed location, you tend to get really strong winds from east coast lows. At this point, I would probably recommend getting yourself out of there, or at least building yourself uh, up into the yeah, an interior part of the house as well, getting everything prepared, mattresses and pillows into an interior room of the house uh, and making sure that you are fully prepared for Wednesday night when this tropical cyclone then begins its landfall. It's a slow moving system, so impacts will occur over a prolonged period of time. You can already see on the outer bands of this tropical cyclone some really heavy rainfall beginning to head into the system here. I don't know why it's in inches, but that's close to 50 or 60 millimeters an hour at this point here. So plenty of rainfall heading across in the outer bands of this tropical cyclone right now. It's uh, gonna be a wet system, that's for sure, which leads me on into the flood preparations. If you live in a flood prone area, make sure you do have sandbags on at standby, making sure you're all ready for some significant flooding because major flooding is expected of all of the major rivers across the southeastern parts of Queensland. So the Narang River for one, the Springbrook River, so Springbrook Dam will receive some significant water contributions to it as well. The Brisbane River should get up towards a moderate flooding alert. 
so if you did flood in 2011, I, I believe it was the 2011 or the 2013 floods down in Brisbane, then you're probably going to end up flooded again from this tropical cyclone here with up to 300 millimeters expected in the catchment in about 12 hours. Some really significant rainfall can be expected for the Brisbane River. Flooding through the Brisbane Air River won't be as bad as what it will be around the Gold Coast. Some really significant flash flooding and then riverine flooding is expected there. And coupled with those waves that are going to back the water up, especially for the Tweed River, expecting some major flooding down there as well through Mara Willumba. And we're expecting some significant flooding as well down in towards the Clarence River, uh, down towards uh, Grafton. And some uh, significant flooding here of the Richmond River that flows through Woodburn and then down towards Bellina along the coastline. So again, significant flooding expected all around, moderate to major riverine flooding expected throughout much of the northeastern corner of New South Wales, and then moderate riverine flooding expected for the Brisbane River and major flooding possible, uh, but not quite expected right now for the Narang River. All in all, some really significant flooding is expected and coupled with the fact that we'll be talking about a significant storm surge as well. If you live in a, an exposed coastal location and you're very close to sea level, definitely start sandbagging the house up right now, having a foot of sandbags around doors and windows, that's for sure. Floor to ceiling windows are notorious for cracking under the water pressure at this time. And if you live in a really flood prone area, so that includes right along the river, very low down, uh, especially around Lismore. I mean, they don't really build right down onto the rivers down there. They, they're a bit smarter than that in this part of Queensland. But if you live in a really, really flood prone area, then I reckon evacuation orders are going to be put in place here. This is going to be a significant flooding event through here, down through Tweed Heads and then further north up through the Gold Coast as well. If you live in that really flood prone areas or along the Narang River, then I'm like, I'm expecting evacuation orders to be put into place. And then you wouldn't, uh, then you definitely want to be following all of those, that's for sure. But in terms of low lying property at this point, I mean, the canals around the Gold Coast will struggle to drain with the amount of rainfall that's coming through. So I'm expecting water levels to approach houses there. Definitely make sure you've got loose ropes on the boat as well. And if you can evacuate the boat up through uh, Coomera, that sort of area as well into Sanctuary Cove, that'd be a good place to take the boat throughout this storm event here. The storm surges up there will be uh, much more moderate. Or if you're just planning on getting out in the boat, I mean, it will be a very, very rough trip if you're heading south. But if you're heading north and you stay protected, you could be heading up towards uh, Harvey Bay, that sort of area on the boat, which would be about a day's cruise from the Gold Coast. And you will find some more pleasant conditions there. But again, make sure you are in a harbour through Thursday and Friday. Certainly some significant damage is expected in the marine side of things from this tropical cyclone, that's for sure. Any other questions or comments, make sure you direct them in the comment section down below. I'm sure the view of meteorology will have plenty of, of advice as well for tropical cyclone preparation across the southeastern corner of Queensland. And if they don't, there'll be a detailed list posted on my Facebook page as well, covering all things that you'll need to prepare that I'm encouraging people to screenshot and use in the event of this tropical cyclone. That basically does it for the tropical cyclone Alfred forecast. Any questions or comments, direct them to me in the comment section down below, but I'll be releasing another detailed forecast update on this tropical cyclone later on this afternoon. So make sure you do stick around for that. In terms of other interesting stuff around Australia as a weather tracker and as that being my job, I'm very, very happy to report that there's not an awful lot else going on. We did have that rainfall in the forecast, but that seems to have been dropped for the far northern areas of Queensland through the uh, first week or the second week of March by the looks of things between the 12th and the 17th of March. It does look like there'll be a little bit more rainfall heading up into the far northern areas of Queensland through uh, the backside of March as well. At least that's what the, what the long range GFS is suggesting right now. Towards the end of March, we could be seeing some significant rainfall up there. But for now, nothing crazy in the way of significant rainfall accumulations across the Cape York Peninsula. Nothing for the Northern Territory, nothing to report on over in Western Australia. And also no other tropical lows either on the radar or looking like they're going to uh, develop on the radar over the next couple of days. Now, Tropical Cyclone Alfred, the extended forecast for that does take it down in towards New South Wales and will bring some significant rainfall ashore uh, in week two as we get down towards uh, the southern areas of New South Wales, so Sydney, Bega, Mallacoota, uh, Wollongong, those sort of areas. We could be seeing some significant rainfall into the second week of March down there. I'm going to take that forecast as it comes. I'm not going to be going too much into detail over it over the next couple of days. I will get to that very shortly, though, into the southeastern corners of uh, New S the South, the southern and the coastal parts of New South Wales, rather. I don't know why I'm just referring to the southeastern parts of New South Wales. I'm in Queensland mode, that's for sure, with Tropical Cyclone Alfred, but again, haven't forgotten about you guys with the rainfall down there, that's for sure. Anyways, on that note, I'm going to wrap this forecast update up now. If you've Feel, if you felt like the information through here has been helpful, then make sure you do subscribe and also leave a like on the video uh, while you're at it. There'll be another detailed forecast update on just Tropical Cyclone Alfred coming out in uh, the afternoon as well, so make sure you are subscribed for that. Stick around for that, and plenty more information will be released in that as well. And we'll be seeing how the Tropical Cyclone uh, develops throughout the course of today as well, which will be quite exciting to see. But yeah, on that note, that is all that I have time for. A special shout out, of course, to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now, and again, I could not run the show without them, and their support is much appreciated. But that is all for me today. I'll catch you in the next storm.